Hi everybody, I hope you are well. Today's video is on the warning signs of problem dog behavior developing. This is a very important video because people call me usually when they've gone down that route for too long, i.e. the dog started lunging and barking or the dog's not coming back. But there's always some warning signs to say this is happening. It very rarely just pops out of nowhere. So for example, in the context of danger, so if your dog is looking a little bit unsure these days, get in there quickly because the uncertainty will then develop to perhaps nervousness or aggression. So what are these early warning signs? Well, a dog has a defense response of flight, freeze or fight. So flight, running away or hiding, very easy to see. Fight, very easy to see. But in the middle, it's not quite as easy to see. So freeze, you've got three types of freeze. A submissive freeze is a dog rolling over on its back. An assertive freeze is the dog going up to the situation. Here they might have their tail straight up or they may posture quite strong to say, oi, back off or they may even just go up and investigate the situation. So when the dog is assertive freezing, it's not quite as easy to see. Then you've got an aggressive freeze, which is lunging and barking. Well, that's really easy to see, but nobody calls me for submissive freezes. No one calls me for assertive freezes. No one calls me for a dog walking away, but they call me when the dog's running away. They call me when the dog's aggressive and lunging, or they call me when the dog's fighting. So really, I want you to pick up on those early signs and I think the mistake people do is they look at behavior and they put it into two categories, desirable and undesirable. And what you'll hear from many people is, oh yes, ignore the undesirable and reward the desirable. But you don't really get the motivations of behavior. So it's really important to understand the motivations of what the dog is trying to communicate from day one. So for example, a dog going up to the door, you've got a puppy that goes up to the door every single time. You look, look at the motivations of that and say, oh, he's just saying hello, but he might not be. That puppy might be going up and thinking, who's coming through this house? This is quite tired at the moment. I don't want people coming through the house. And as that dog gets older, he might start jumping up or he might start growling. And when he starts growling, it could be silenced by, you know, tapping him on the nose. Don't do that. But then when he starts lunging and barking and getting really upset, well, he was saying he was uncomfortable all this way. So an example, of just how to address that all the time is not allow your dog to get in front of everybody who comes through the door and therefore the dog won't be assertive freezing and then it won't get to aggressive freeze. So it's really important to pick up on those warning signs. You've got to make sure you get in there quite quickly because I think it's very easy to take a back seat and explain the problem behavior away like oh he's just saying hello to that dog. It's like no where's the standards or in the context of recall is your dog stop listening and just you're taking longer to get them back each time? If they are, well then there's some warning signs your dog's not listening to you because if it was coming back and shooting back straight away to you when it was a puppy, but now it's got some more desires not to listen to you and therefore wants to play with other dogs and stops listening to you, you've got to make sure you get in there quite quickly. Or with your dog on the lead, for example, you know, it can start off where you've got a puppy that walks quite nicely on a loose lead, but then as it gets older, it's got stronger desires and more wants. So it might start pulling a little bit more and you might have in your head, well, we've got to get to the park, we've only got an hour and therefore explain the problems away and not correct the behavior. But then all these things start building up. So they start off so small. They start off so nuanced. So it's so important to, to address it at its core and then start putting language in to show the dog what they should be doing so it doesn't develop. You know, it could be like separation anxiety as well. So, you know, if your dog's following you around all day and looks a bit unsure and you're fussing your dog, you know, over cuddling, over loving your dog, which some people do, and then your dog starts panicking when you leave, You've got to take it back to the basics again and go, okay, how can I get it to the point where the dog's okay with me just leaving for five seconds and, and back in again, and, you know? So just little, little steps. So when someone says to me, ah, oh, the behavioral issues popped out of nowhere, or the dog goes from one to 10, all of a sudden, I've never seen them do that before. It's now, nah, that's not the case. Uh, for example, you know, if you've got a dog that's pulling on the lead all the time, and then it starts barking. Well, if it's pulling on the lead all the time, it's going out in a heightened state. So then when it goes to the next step of barking at other dogs, well, it's already het up. Whereas if it's behind you while you're walking and really calm and looking up at you and stopping when you stop and speeding up when you speed up and turning when you turn, and it even allows you to say hello to other dogs and hello to other people at the door, then that behavior isn't just gonna pop out of nowhere. So again, picking up on those warning signs 
and addressing it straight away will do you and your dog's life the world of good. So I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and I hope to see you on future videos. Bye for now. Thank you.